Making Vertical Pulls with a Rear-Mounted Winch, William Hovey Smith, 2016. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and here we pull a stob and a weed tree out of my backyard. This is one of the two offending stobs I have sticking in the ground. To show you the method, uh, we're going to go ahead and put a loop around it and pull it out with the winch. I use several wraps, usually two or three, around it so it gives a maximum bite as it'll get. Get it as low as you can on the work. Make a knot. On the running end, I'll do a loop like this. Two overhand knots, basically. And this gives a non-slip loop. It may fail because the cord may break, but not because the knot slips. To operate the winch from the rear of the truck, we have to take this power cable and then install it here on the front. We get it off. And then take this other identical end and install it on the winch to the rear. Now that we have the cables connected here, we can go ahead and walk this cable out. Now we'll go ahead and pull out our stop. Well, it looks like it's not going to come quite as easy as I thought it might. I'm going to step back a little bit because this thing could snap. What was wrong with that last setup was not the strength of the components, but the direction of the pull. So we have a tripod set up now, and we're going to try for a just straight vertical pull using exactly the same knots and the same components. So here we go. Woof. No problem. Is a straight up pull? Yeah. Very few pounds of pressure. With a horizontal pull? <laughs> yeah. Uh, more than 400 pounds, I would say, and uh, that broke the rope. While we are here with the winch, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't pull that uh, hung up tree straight down on the ground and uh, get it where I can work it with the chainsaw a little better. Yeah, that did good. Uh, now I can chomp that up pretty quick. Well, we now have our vertical pull assembly in travel mode. And right now I am standing by my little 
gripe over here, which has a very vigorous wisteria bush growing in it. And I've been trying to pull this thing out for a long time. Well, the ground is sort of wet, and I'm going to see if I can do it with a vertical pull. I've tried a horizontal pull before, and all that has done is just uh, broke it off at the ground. So we're going to see if we can pull it straight up, and maybe this time get it roots and all. This wisteria bush has been growing in my grapevine for some years, and I've tried to get it before, but just usually just broke it off. Now here on my first attempt, I'm using a nylon rope. And I find I'm just pulling the tripod over rather than pulling the bush itself. So I find I have to do something else with it. And what I wind up doing is using my lawn tractor as a dead man on the back side to keep the tripod from tipping. Now we have attached a cable to our lawn tractor over here and secured it to the top of the pulley. So hopefully that will keep the tripod from tipping and we'll be able to get a straight upward pull on our wayward bush there. Well, we shall shortly see what happens. Since our last try, we've made some changes. First off, we now have this piece of cable here, which is much stronger, of course, than the nylon rope. And that is now hooked to the bottom of the plant so to give a good upward pull. First, and secondly, we have had up nearly three inches of rain. <laughs> Uh, since I last attempted it, so the ground is pretty well saturated. So with these two things added to the fact that we're taking the pull now more nearly in line with this leg as well as have it secured on the other side with a lawnmower should hopefully allow us to extract it and get this pesky thing out of here. Well, we have the tension on it all right, and it's starting to exert a good pull. I think it'll either tear the plant apart or pull it this time. The pulling action is actually moving the lawnmower and pulling the tripod down, but at least it's getting the bush out of the ground. We have succeeded with our vertical pull. And what we use is our new cable, of course, my tripod, my lawnmower as a dead man over there to add extra weight and keep the tripod from moving too bad, and a snatch block, which enabled me to get a better pull with less friction. And this was the offending structure. Yeah. You can see now why it was so hard to get. These roots had gone all the way under that grapevine. And so, yeah, uh, it was very, being very, very well held. But now, we finally, finally got it. But now, this is Hovey Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Most of my outdoor books are basic treatments of the subject and are just chock full of information of all sorts. Uh, I write some of the most complete books written about the subject materials, <laughs> like practical bow fishing even. Now, extreme muzzleloading is about my own hunts and my own doings with muzzleloading guns. 
Now, I have a new ebook series, including shooting and maintaining your muzzleloader and hunting with muzzleloading shotguns and smoothbore muskets, which are instructive. I have a new series of business books under the Profit brand. The first of these are ideas for new businesses. And here's a little blurb about me and about the book. The Torex Winch is not one of the more common brands. Now, I did not get home free from all this. In fact, I got stuck in my yard and had to winch my way out and tangle the cable on the spool in the process. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 500 videos, go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.